going on YouTube? It's Paul Paul Piper back here with you and today I'm going to be doing another loose leaf chewing tobacco review. This time we've got Star loose leaf chewing tobacco. This is the uh, original flavored uh, loose leaf chew. I already did my Star Peach so if you haven't viewed that check it out. It was my first video on my channel and uh, it's my probably one of my favorite chews is that star peach so we'll see how this stacks up I've already had it I already know my opinion on it but we'll go ahead and review it anyhow so presentation it's quite plain it's basically a red version of the peach and it just says star finest quality loose leaf chewing tobacco and it's got red with some white lines on it as far as the bottom goes I'll give you a view of that and if you can't read that it says Swisher International Incorporated Wheeling West Virginia and the leaf composition is 46 and a half percent domestic and 53 and a half percent foreign so it's like all Swisher products. I don't think that Swisher uh, deviates from that uh, leaf composition. I think it's always 46 and a half domestic and 53 and a half foreign. So now, as far as leaf presentation, I mean it's loose leaf chew. There's really nothing different. Smell. smells a little bit more bitter meaning more tobacco flavor than the uh, molasses and prunes raisins that sort of thing it's going to be smells much more like beech nut original out of the pouch than it does red man uh, or Levi Garrett or anything so if you're at home go ahead and put a cheek in with me here sorry for the noise in the background I'm here at my property and uh, I'm set up right alongside the river at the river I'm got my feet my boots are in the water and behind me I've got the bio and uh, over there there's a swamp area and there is a uh, Canada goose that's just flipping out I don't know if it's probably mating season for them so it could be a male that's you know sounding off trying to attract a female or I only hear one so I don't think that there's a challenger I did see two of them fly in though there was two uh, mallard ducks that flew by and then shortly thereafter there were two Canada, uh, Canada geese that, that went over that way so that's one of them but he's been going off for the last five ten minutes at least so maybe he'll have a chew with me And this stuff is probably about as cheap as you're going to get. $2.19. Star is economical. So, we'll let that juice up a little bit. And I usually do all my videos that I've made. I haven't been doing this that long. I use my cell phone and I you know put it I affix it somewhere and just have it kind of stable and I don't really ever move or do anything like that so I want to show you around a little bit here you can see the see the property the area that I come to I said this is my uh, sanctuary if I didn't have it I <laughs> I don't know uh, 
wouldn't like that. But so go ahead and join me here. Go ahead and take it off here. I'll show you around a little bit. Try not to fall in the river. Got the river behind me. That goose is way off yonder. There's another swamp, and that's where he's hanging out. So, got here my walking stick. It's really nice uh, piece of sycamore that I picked up. It's about the right height and size. So, I've had this for about a year and a half. It's taken its good long while to juice up. But it's got the sweetness. I guess the other time that I had this, I was thinking much more of a bitter type. It smells that way out of the pouch. But it kind of kind of tastes a little bit more sweet. So maybe a mix between Levi Garrett and beech nut. I didn't have a great opinion of it when I had it before, but that's why you got to try things more than once. Stuff grows on you. You know, you can't be so apt to try things one time and, and throw it aside. You got to keep coming back to it. It's taking its time to juice up, though. But it may just be me. I mean, I did just uh, smoke a bowl of Kentucky Club. So if you're a pipe smoker, I encourage you to check that video out. It's a Kentucky Club aromatic. Good, good blend. I think you'll like it, even though you can't get it anymore. Because John Middleton stopped making it. So, but here we are up on the ridge. You can look down into the river. You got this little trail up on the river bank in front of me. So there, and then on the other side, you got the river and then the floodplain. So, kind of a neat ecological area here. Wetlands and floodplains are very important to the stability of the ecosystem in any area. Basically, they filter out all the pollutants, or at least as many as they can. Um, the water flows into the streams and ditches and that sort of thing, and then ends up trickling down through the wetlands in the river, or the river will spill over into the wetlands, into the floodplain, and those contaminants will leach in. But a lot of the organisms that live in the wetlands area, you know, they, they will filter out those um, pollutants, those contaminants. So, that's a little bit about the importance of wetlands, and that's why it's so, so, so important to, you know, protect them, you know. Um, whether, like I said, I, I typically don't like government action, forced action, that sort of thing, but, you know, I would prefer any time to have a private entity, private party, be the one to, uh, you know, make their own choices and enact some sort of conservation, you know, out of the goodness of their heart. But, you know, you have to have some modicum of uh, community, I guess, if nothing else, to make sure that, you know, you don't do something that's going to have grave implications. So, I guess... That's uh, kind of a fine line. 
it's finally starting to juice up. It's not a very thick juice. It's pretty thin, but it is sweet. It's got that bitterness in the background, but I think the sweetness kind of comes to the forefront. So, all in all, not a bad tobacco. But, yeah, so way off yonder there you can see that's the that's the flood plain so in order to get to the back part of my property I'd have to trek through that there's an area where the river's kind of spilling over and you know I could do that but I'm not going to so I'm gonna stay on the uplands here um, and uh, that's where I'll be spending the day but this river is kind of unique yeah, before they built um, the Miami and Erie Canal and the different canal systems across, you know, New York and Pennsylvania and Ohio and, and Michigan, you know, early settlers used rivers like this. This river, this Paw Paw, Paw River, um, was actually utilized for flatboats back in the 1830s. You can imagine, you know trekking a boat through here and uh, you read some of the stories in the old county history books and I encourage you to check your county history book out if you haven't done so there's a lot of good information about your area and you can find those typically at your local library a lot of them were published in the 1880s through about 1900 that's kind of when everybody started doing them everywhere but uh you know there's a lot of that along here settlers moving things uh, by boat and just you read some of the stories about all the mosquitoes and all that sort of thing and you know kind of <laughs> kind of crazy the things that our settlers did our forefathers but anyway folks I'm going to uh, get off uh, and conclude this uh, video star I'm gonna go ahead and give it a star regular I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a six out of ten six out of ten for loose leaf chewing tobacco it's very economical try it pick it up you might like it so until next time it's been paul paul piper see you